Hello and welcome to a new Backdive tutorial. In this video, I want to introduce you to the Backdive Python package, which you can use to easily integrate Backdive API requests into your Python code. I will start by talking about the installation of the package and the initialization of the Backdive client before explaining the two methods of the package, the search and retrieve functions and giving some examples to show you how you can use them. The Backdive Python package is available in the Python package index, also known as PyPy, and can be easily installed from the terminal using the pip installer. The installed package, of course, needs to be imported into your Python code or into your Python console before you initialize the Backdive client with your login data. Here I'm going to demonstrate how these functions work in practice. So I first import the Backdive package to my Python console and initialize the client with my email address and password. When the Backdive client is activated, you can use the two methods, search and retrieve. The search method takes Backdive IDs other IDs and taxon names using different parameters and fetches and stores all backdev IDs that are found for the specific query. So for my first demonstration, I'm simply going to use it with one backdive ID. And as you can see, it returns a one, which means that it stored this one backdev ID. The actual data for the strains whose IDs were stored with the search method can then be retrieved using the retrieve method. The method returns a nested dictionary that contains all the information on the strains that are in Backdive and that you could also see on the Backdive website if you would search for the strains there and that we saw in the browser using the fetch endpoint in the API introduction video. The same also works with more than one Backdive ID. Here I added a second one to the search method and when I now use the retrieve function, instead of just printing out the complete information on the strains, I choose to only print out a part of it. Here the general information so that this doesn't get too long for my example here. So you can see here this part of the received dictionary for the two strains and the general category includes things like the DSM number if present, some keywords on the strains and a short description. As I said, the search method also works with taxon names and for this we use the taxonomy parameter. In my first example, I want to search for the strains of the genus Muroides. When I run this, all the strains for the genus Muroides that are in the Backdive database are stored and there are 106 strains. Doing the same with the species name simply looks like this. Here the species is Muroides odoratus and there are 19 strains for this species in the Backdive database. If you had a subspecies, then you could of course do the search similarly. Instead of retrieving the complete data on the strains and then using only a small part of it, like I did in my earlier example, where I just printed out the general information, the retrieve function can also be used with filters by specifying which information we want to retrieve. I will show you how that works now by retrieving data for the 19 Muroides odorato strains that I just searched for. And I add a parameter to the retrieve function, which is a list of keys specifying what data I want to retrieve. In this case, I'm choosing to only retrieve the culture collection numbers of the strains and no further information on them. And here I'm given the culture collection numbers for all these backdive strains. Many, as you can see, have a DSM number. One, for example, here has a CCOG number 
And on the bottom is the type strain, which has a lot of different culture collection numbers. Of course, you can also do this the other way around. Here I search with a culture collection number, store the strain and then retrieve it again. But in this case, I have chosen to use another filter, which is the taxonomic family information. And I receive back the information that this DSM strain belongs to the family Flavobacteriaceae. Now I will again retrieve data for the same strain, but use different filters. I have now here a list of two filters. I want to have the information that is stored in the full scientific name field and the information that is stored in the culture medium field. So I do get here the full scientific name of my strain and information on two different possible culture media. I'm now going to show you another small example. Let's say I want to go through a number of DSM strains and look if those are present in the Backdive database. And if yes, I want to find out their Backdive IDs. For the sake of time, I'm only going to go through the DSM strains 1 to 20. So what I'm doing here is I'm simply going through the numbers 1 to 20 print out the DSM identifier, so simply the prefix DSM together with the number, and then I use this DSM identifier in the search method. And if I receive a result for the search, I retrieve the backdive ID of the strain and also print it out next to the DSM identifier. As you can see, not all the strains are present in the Backdive database, but for those that are, I now have the Backdive IDs here printed next to my DSM numbers. In my second example, I'm going to again search for all the strains of the genus Muroides, and then I want to know which species the strains of this genus belong to. So I'm first initializing a list that I'm going to use to save the species names in and then retrieve the species field for each strain. As you can see here, even though I am filtering for only the species field, I still have to dive quite a bit into the output dictionary that the retrieve function returns to get the actual string of the species name that I want to have. This is simply a matter of printing out this dictionary once and having a close look at it and trying around a bit to find where exactly that string is. When my species names list is completed, I just count how many instances there are for each name. And as you can see, most of the strains belong to the species Muroides odoratimimus and Muroides odoratus, but there are also quite a few other species in this genus. And with this, you have now seen how you can use the Backdive Python package to retrieve data from Backdive. I hope you're going to use this in the future. And if you have not yet watched our API introduction video, I want to recommend that to you. If you like R better than Python, we also have an R package for the Backdive API. And of course, there's also a video tutorial for that. See you on Backdive. Bye.